Hello and good morning. This is uh, Mama Pixel here, and I'm just going to take a couple of minutes to show you how to connect two polygon objects um, and make it look seamless. Uh, so in this particular case, I have a student example here, um, and they're building a chair with this frame, which could be made out of wood or plastic. And we want to make it look like these two pieces have been seamed together. Um, so there's a couple of things we need to do before that can happen. When you are joining objects, um, the first thing we want to do is make sure that this one, uh, so just the ends of this particular piece, <laughs> let's get my mouse actually working, huh? That'd be great. Um, so this one, this line of edges along the outside here should actually already be sitting perfectly flush with this piece here so that you already want them to be at least visually looking like they're in exactly the same place. Um, like this one's fairly close, you can see. It's already almost in position. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, just scale this in slightly and see if I can't get that to line up on both sides. I'm thinking it's going to take a little bit of fiddling and my mouse is super sensitive. Okay, so that's fairly close. The next thing I want to do is actually come in here and grab these uh, vertices at the end and just line them up even more flush with this piece. And I'm going to hit 4 on my keyboard so I can go into wireframe mode and just see what I'm doing. Um, so right now that line of vertices is slightly wider than the piece that we've got here. Um, I've got two choices. I can either make that line of vertices smaller so that it fits the piece, or I can make that piece um, wider so that it matches the line of vertices. Now, frankly, I'm more of the opinion that, that piece can be a little bit wider, but let's actually increase both and see what happens to that piece up there. So, if I increased it so that it's about the same width as that line of vertices. I'm going up to about 1.055 there. Um, that's pretty close. Let's go to 1.08. Copy that. Go apply those same values over here and see what happens. Well, I'll get some intersection with the top piece of the chair, but um, I think we can work with that. Alright, so, and let's just do a little bit more fidgeting. I'm just going to scale that down slightly in Y so that it fits that top piece a little bit better. And we'll copy that uh, Y value and apply it to the other as well because we do want these to match up. Okay, so now that we've got um, our lines of vertices, so the ends of this back piece are fairly close in width. Uh, and, and volume to the piece we have here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to <laughs> once again try and get my right mouse button to just function. I'm using a uh, trackball mouse which has slowly decided to give up the ghost over here. Um, okay, so let's start matching these up just a bit better. And so that's the first part. The second part is we actually want to draw on this um, vertical piece. We want to draw the same vertices that are at the end of that back piece so that they just fit together perfectly. So to do this, it's going to make my life simpler if I actually turn on a uh, wireframe on shaded, which is this little blue cube with white outlines here. And that way I can see all my wireframes. Uh, which is quite handy. And I can see that there's a couple of edge loops that I can take advantage of here. Like ideally, I'll be taking um, this edge here and connecting it to uh, this edge there. So let's actually start drawing on this. So what I want is my multi tool, And I want to just start placing some vertices that are going to be roughly where 
this pipe is going to connect in. And I know that I'm going to need one here. And this does mean I'm going to have to build some extra edge loops um, for this vertical pipe, and that's okay. Edge loops are nice. They round, they round us out. And we'll just do a couple more. I think that's possibly too far, but we are about to find out. And I'll close that off. And I'll hit enter. So there we go. And then we have lines on the top part pipe, the vertical pipe, that are fairly same the same number. Well that's the first one to remember. Always make sure that you have the same number of vertices between each of the connecting pieces that you want to stitch together. So now um, I'm going to snap the vertices on my horizontal pipe into place on these new vertices that I've created on the vertical pipe. I'm doing that by selecting a vertice, holding down V. When I hold down V you see that square turns into a circle. So I'm holding down V and just uh, while I have that hold down I left click and drag that on top of the vertice I want to uh, connect it to. And I have to jump into wireframe mode sometimes just to find the vertice because it's floating inside another object. And once I've got these all lined up, I'll do a couple more things and then we're going to be done and we can stitch that together. Um, so first of all, how does that look? Have I warped it too much? Because you always, like when you're stitching objects together, you certainly do not want them to warp. You don't want it to like suddenly um, swish down like it's aluminium or something. Okay, I think those are pretty well lined up. Now before I do anything else, um, I've got to make sure that I've got some edge loops that are, are going around this object, because what we have right here, this is called an n-gon. An n-gon is something with uh, more than four vertices. So, <laughs> stupid mouse. Uh, you can see I've got one, two, three, four, five, six on this n-gon. And n-gons are well, there's a lot of programs that allow you to do 3D painting that just won't won't work with an engon. They're very prejudiced against engons. It's very anti-engon. Um, and there's a lot of game engines that just say, no, you don't get one of those. No engons for you. So what I'm going to do is I'll do insert edge loop. And insert edge loop won't cross an engon, but I can at least get a nice edge loop around the other side um, and then just connect them with the multi-cut tool. So I'll just insert those two edge loops to make sure that I've got something that can connect. And I'll use that multi-cut tool again. Um, well, if I, yeah, my mouse wasn't selecting strange random features. Um, so multi-cut tool, there we go, to just bridge those edge loops across. So that I've got now quads, so quads being a face with four triangles, the face with four vertices, sorry. Um, so now I've got quads all around. Um, that's just that's just good habits uh, you want to get into. Stay with quads or triangles at all times. Just makes it easier for other people to work with your stuff. It renders better. And when you take it into animation, it deforms better as well. Because uh, if it's quads, then you're dictating to Maya how something should move. Okay, so what you see now is you've got these two pieces which are still separate, um, but they look as if they belong together. You can tell that one has been uh, lined up quite cleanly with the other. There's edge loops on this other piece that um, match, the, match the, the shape of the end of this horizontal piece. So the last thing we need to do, because they are still separate objects, um, is one there are faces on the inside of this horizontal piece that we want to get rid of. So there's a couple ways we can do that. We can try and zoom into the object, which is, oh, this is so finicky. I don't like doing that. Or we can just move this away. Now, I want to be able to move this away and still have it uh, be in exactly the same spot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to freeze transforms on that. 
what I mean by freeze transforms is you'll see on the right here back support has these values and all these values are telling you where it exists in space so if I change just the Y value you see if I move it up and down that translate Y is going to change so that's just telling you where it is in space compared to where it was the last time it had 0, 0, 0 transforms now I can tell Maya, by the way, I want this to be the natural default position for this object and for this to be 0, 0, 0. So to do that, I'll go freeze transforms. Um, freeze transforms currently lives underneath my little recording bar, which does so we'll go uh, freeze transforms. You'll find that under modify freeze transforms. And you'll see that that's completely zeroed out my channel box now. Um, so if I move it back, my Z says, hey, you've moved me back by 1.8. But if I go in and say, I want you back to go back to zero, pow, it pops right back into place. So, which means I can move this away and select those faces, destroy them. They're gone now. You don't want to have any faces in between the objects that you're creating. That's going to create a lot of weird artifacts when you go to render them. Um, stupid mouse button. Not working. See, uh, this mouse is totally fine for playing MMOs online, but not so fine for actually doing my work. So, pop that back into place. Hmm. Hmm. Somehow, I, uh, I derped and I froze transforms when it was in a lower position. But, um, that's okay. We can fix that now. Uh, for both of these objects, whenever you combine two different objects, you want them both to have zero transforms like this one, and you want to get rid of all the history. Because whenever you combine objects, um, you're changing an object in Maya, and if it's carrying history with it, it might have, it's got the potential to corrupt the object, and if you corrupt the object, you might lose it forever, uh, which sucks. So your, your delete history button lives under edit, delete by type, history. And what we have now is we have two objects that are very clean. You got zero transforms, you got zero history. So all I have to do now is go select both objects, go up to mesh, and combine. And that has created one object that I could um, move around together if I want. Now there's still one more sp uh, step that we need to do before we can call ourselves done because if I go in here and select the vertice and I move it away, you'll notice that there's actually still a gap there. They're not actually combined fully yet. We still need to do merge verts. So I'm going to select all of those and I'm going to go up to Edit Mesh and Merge Components Options. Those little white boxes are always your options boxes. Now your threshold is how far from the vertice Maya is going to look to merge things together. So if I set a threshold of say 10 and I hit apply, you see it merged freaking everything. And that's not what we want. So let's try uh, 0 0.01 instead. And I'll hit apply. Whoop, merged a few too many things still. It's still too high a threshold. Okay, how about 0 0.001? Hey, okay. Let's let's see if that actually merged just the vertices we wanted it to. So I'll select the vertice and I'll move it. <gasps> yes, there's now one connected polygon. You have yourself an object that is fully connected and merged together. So there you go. That is how to uh, align two different polygonal objects. Make sure that they are sitting flush with each other as if they were always meant to be connected. Um, how to add extra edges on one object so that it's got the same number of vertices as the object you want to connect it to, and how to add in your edge loops to just make sure that you're still working with clean polygonal topology as you go. And the last thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to select that piece, and because I've got some funky history going on there, I'll just go delete history, and now it's nice and clean. Okay, so there you go. I hope you found this useful, and have yourself a fabulous day. Goodbye.